SPF, DKIM, and DMARC are three tools that can be used to help prevent spoofing and uh, validate email authenticity for your email service or domain. And I'm going to uh, explain how they work and uh, show you how to uh, set them up in this, uh, in this lesson here. So first let's talk about SPF, which stands for Sender Policy Framework. Before I get started on the diagram that I'm about to show you, just from a high level, SPF is a, a mechanism that tells servers, uh, receiving email servers, what servers are allowed to send mail on behalf of your domain. It uses an SPF record published in DNS to do that. So when you're setting up SPF, You'll publish your SPF record to DNS, uh, to the sending organization's DNS server. And then when an email is sent out from your domain, the receiving server receives it and performs an SPF record lookup by querying DNS for the SPF record of the uh, sending domain to verify whether it came from an authorized uh, sending server or IP address. And then if, if there's no SPF record or if the SPF record of the domain uh, specifies that the server that the message came from was not authorized to send on behalf of that domain, then the message can be rejected or marked as spam. Or if it passes SPF validation, then the message can be accepted for delivery by the receiving email server and then sent uh, placed into the recipient's mailbox. Now, of course, there are some caveats and some other details when configuring SPF, for example, when considering things like um, subdomains or um, other servers that are allowed to send, such as smart hosts and things like that. But for purposes of this lesson, this uh, will provide a, a good overview. This is what an SPF record looks like. So, for example, you can see here the uh, Every SPF record starts with a V equals, that's the version number SPF1. They are all, they're all the same. And then, uh, now again, this is a very simplified version of an SPF record. There are a lot of other um, uh, tags and things you can put in an SPF record, but for purposes of, of, of simplicity, this SPF record specifies the version SPF1, the IP address that is allowed to send mail on behalf of the uh, domain example.com, and then whether all messages uh, should be sent from that specific IP address or if there are some um, exceptions based on smart hosts and things like that. So there, uh, that's where the other, um, there are a variety of other tags and syntax measures that come into play. So as I mentioned, SPF can get a little bit more advanced or actually quite a bit more advanced than that. So there's a lot of good information online, specifically OpenSPF.org is a good resource for how to format your SPF records. There are, you know, as I mentioned, there are other tags and mechanisms that are included in an SPF record. So, for example, the, uh, the VSPF that we saw in the SPF record that I showed you, that's always included. Uh, but you can also add some other tags, such as uh, your MX record tag, A record tags, and things like that. Uh, and then the, um, the SPF record policy, accept, reject. Uh, mark it as uh, spam or questionable or other other tags that you can add. So this site here has a lot of great information on SPF and how to configure your uh, your SPF records. So you can refer to this for a more advanced uh, tutorial on SPF. Both MDaemon and Security Gateway can check incoming mail for SPF records. So in Security Gateway, for example, uh, I'll show you what it looks like when an SPF lookup is performed on a message. So I'm just going to select uh, SPF and my reason is section here when doing a search in the message log to pull up an example. These are all the messages that were rejected or quarantined based on SPF. So let's pick this one that was quarantined, for example. And looking through the transcript, we're looking for the part, uh, the section where the SPF record lookup was performed. 
and that's right here. So Security Gateway looked up the SPF record on company.com, and uh, this is the IP address that the uh, email came from. This is the uh, domain's SPF policy right here. And then the connecting IP was evaluated against all of the data found in the sending domain's SPF record. And based on that SPF record, Security Gateway determined that um, it was a soft fail. Uh, this, this symbol here, this tilde symbol, uh, so uh, it was quarantined uh, as a result. And two points were added to the message score. And then SPF processing uh, ended. The next tool to help prevent spoofing and tampering with messages is called DKIM, Domain Keys Identified Mail. And the way this works is DKIM is a mechanism that signs all outbound messages from a domain with a specific key, uh, what we call a, a, a private key, and then a corresponding public key is published to DNS uh, to the DNS records and then the receiving server can compare the two keys to see if they match. Now, and I'll explain in this diagram here. So the sending server publishes their public DNS key, uh, their public DKIM to DNS. And then when the sender sends an email, the sending server signs the email with their, with the uh, associated private key. The receiving server then sees that the message is signed by DKIM looks up the DKIM record in DNS taken from the domain that was passed in the DKIM signature of the email message, compares the signature in the email message or the DKIM key in the email message with the uh, public key published to the sending domain's DNS record. And if they match, then the message can be delivered. But if they don't match, then the message is uh, can be quarantined or rejected uh, based on uh, your policies that you have in place. And uh, just to show you a little bit more from a real world perspective on how this works, um, I'll use Security Gateway as an example here. Because with, it, with most mail servers, Security Gate or Gateways, whether it's, mail ser whether it's, whether it's Security Gateway or a daemon or an exchange server, they, most of them have the capability of signing outbound mail with DKIM. And it works by creating a key, uh, what we call a selector and a key, and the key is published to DNS. So just as an example, I've created a selector in Security Gateway called test, and I've opted to sign all outbound messages using domain keys identified mail, using DKIM. Once I've created the uh, selector, then you can click on here to view the DNS configuration or the public key, in other words, for that selector. And then this is what you will publish to your DNS record. So with my DNS set up here on my DNS server, here is my uh, DKIM record that I've published to DNS. It's a, it's a plain text record that you publish to DNS. So the record name would be DKIM. It would populate with DKIM plus your domain. And then you would enter the, uh, the uh, text here, the key that was generated from your mail server or gateway. So now that we've discussed DKIM and SPF, let's talk about how DMARC works, because DMARC is a mechanism that kind of ties the two together and allows domain owners to tell receiving domains or receiving mail servers how to handle messages that claim to come from their domain that did not align with DKIM or SPF. And the way this works is the sending organization publishes a DMARC record to DNS. This DMARC record has, uh, I'll show you an example of it, but it explains what to do with messages that failed or were questionable as whether they passed or failed a DKIM or SPF. You know, for example, quarantine the message or reject the message. So the sending email server sends an email, and then the receiving email server looks at the uh, domain, the, at the sending domain, and first checks SPF for uh, alignment. Then it checks DKIM to verify if the public and private keys match, if it is signed by DKIM. And then it checks the DMARC record to determine what to do with messages that 
uh, did not pass SPF, a DKIM, or both. And then if the message is accepted, it is uh, delivered to the recipient's inbox, or it can be rejected based on the sending domains DMARC policy, or if the sending domain has a policy of quarantine, then the message can be quarantined. And also, an added benefit of DMARC is that you can specify in your DMARC record whether or not you want other mail servers that receive email claiming to come from your domain to be able to send you back reports providing an overview of how your domain is being used. So uh, these are called forensic re reports and aggregate reports. This is an example of a DMARC record and the syntax that is used for the DMARC record. So they all begin with V equals DMARC. They have a P equals tab and here's a, a key of all the different tags down here in the bottom. So, for example, the P equals tag is the policy, and this will say reject or quarantine or none. An optional tag is the percent tag, which tells receiving servers what percentage of messages to handle based on the policy. So, a good rule of thumb, for example, when deploying DMARC is to start with a, um, uh, if you start with a policy of none, for example, you don't need a percent tag. But then if you go onto a policy of quarantine or reject, then you can start with a smaller percentage as you get more uh, reports on how your domain is being used. And then if you need to make any changes to how your domain is being used during this time, then having a lower percentage rating here allows fewer messages to be uh, rejected or quarantined, at least until you get your domain uh, nailed down uh, tight with DKIM and SPF. And then once everything is uh, configured properly with DKIM and SPF, in other words, um, your SPF record is um, valid for all sending uh, mail servers or gateways or devices that send on behalf of your domain. And all of your DKIM signed messages are, um, are matched up properly and everything else looks good, then you can ramp up that percentage rating accordingly. There's an RUA tag, which, stand, uh, which is the A stands for aggregate, and that's the aggregate report that is sent to an, e an address that you specify here. Usually it's the postmaster. So when you put the RUA tag in your DMARC record, you're telling receiving mail servers where to send aggregate reports, which are reports on how your domain is being used. You also have an RUF tag, which is similar, which is where to send failure reports. These are reports for uh, messages that failed uh, your DMARC, that, that weren't aligned with DKIM and SPF based on your DMARC record. And, uh, this is the address you can send those failure reports to. So as you can see here, there are a variety of other tags you can put in a uh, DMARC record. So you can find a lot more information on uh, DMARC.org on their website. There are lots of tutorials and lots of uh, uh, resources on how to format your, uh, your DMARC record. Here's an example of a DMARC record I created for one of my test domains here. So again, it's got the V equals DMARC. I have a policy of reject here with an address where I want aggregate reports to go, an address where I want failure or uh, forensic reports uh, to go as well. So uh, again, the uh, DMARC.org website has good resources for the other tags that you can put in a DMARC uh, record. And this is what those DMARC reports look like. This is... Uh, a report showing all the different uh, IP addresses that used uh, my domain uh, or the domain in, in you know, referenced here, for example, like if, for example, if this were my domain, these are the reports that I would get from other servers that received mail claiming to come from my domain with the results of the uh, tests, DKIM, SPF alignment tests, and so forth, and whether they passed or failed. So again, this gives you a really good idea of how, where, mail claiming to come from your domain is being sent from based on the source IP and uh, this provides you more information to uh, lock your domain down and ensure that only authorized servers are sending mail on behalf of your domain. So whether you use Security Gateway or MDaemon or any other mail server or gateway, uh, that particular gateway or server product will have settings or should have settings that you can configure to, to uh, validate DKIM 
signatures, SPF records, and uh, DMARC verification as well. So, for example, this is Security Gateway, and this is where you can find Security Gateway's settings for SPF verification and uh, what to do with messages that produced a hard fail or a soft fail. So, in other words, Security Gateway uh, queried the SPF record uh, for the uh, sending domain um, and checked to see if the message was sent from a valid uh, or authorized server. Likewise, with DKIM verification, Security Gateway can be configured to verify DKIM signatures when messages are signed by DKIM, and then you can decide what to do with messages that uh, pass, for example, which yeah, is uh, subtracting a given number of points uh, to the spam score. You'd put a negative number, for example, uh, in this uh, box here. And then with the DMARC verification, you have settings here where you can determine what to do with messages that returned a reject result or a quarantine result. So what this means is, even though a sending domain's DMARC record can specify in their policy whether they want you to reject or quarantine messages, you can still configure Security Gateway to do whatever action you prefer. Reject, uh, refuse the message, quarantine it, or accept it, and then optionally tag the subject with a series of characters and add to the spam score. Uh, you, you'll probably find similar settings on other mail servers and gateways, but you know, typically when somebody specifies a policy in their DMARC record, such as quarantine or a reject, then that's what they prefer you do. But you do have some leeway here, uh, depending on what gateway or server product you use. So that pretty much sums up how SPF, DKIM, and DMARC all work together. And uh, again, these three tools are uh, certainly useful for uh, helping to prevent spoofing and uh, tampering of email messages and especially with uh, everything that's going on with all of the malware and all of the spam bots out there and all of the spoofing that's going on we certainly recommend that you utilize these three tools to protect your domain and also to protect your users from spam 